Welcome to Michelle Mayer from the Geneva Observatory, who not only discovered the first exoplanet around 15 years ago, but has also just discovered the first uh, very low mass Earth-like planet, um, which is 1.9 Earth masses. Um, so perhaps you'd like to tell us about this system. It's a very nice system. It's v relatively close to the sun and with four different planets. So already few of them was identified in the past few years. But what was new is a new planet with only a mass of 1.9 times the mass of the Earth, so let's say less than twice the mass of the Earth. And uh, so the, at the present time, it's, a, it's the smallest, the lightest planet we have discovered. And uh, what is also very interesting in this system, that the external one, the most distant of the, of the system, is uh, located at a distance such that water could be liquid at the surface. So and I believe this is the first example of a low mass planet, it's seven times the mass of the Earth, inside the liquid water zone. So if we dream a little bit, maybe we have the complex chemistry of life on the surface of such a planet. And will it be possible to do follow-up observations of that planet um, to perhaps learn a bit more about whether it might be habitable or not? Uh, the follow-up studies are possible for the, for the low mass planet, we can search for transit. Just to, be, to know the, the size of the planet, if you have the size and the mass, you can hear, say something on the internal constitution, if it's rock, if it's metal, or things like this. For the most external one, we have to wait a long time to have the capability to do images. For the immediate, I don't see any possibility of, uh, of subsequent studies. But in the future, if you have the resolution to see the planet, maybe from the space, we can have a chance to, to, to directly see the planet and do, and this would be extremely interesting to the chemical analysis of the, of the, of the atmosphere of the planet. This is, could be maybe also in the, in the possibility of the big 42 meter class telescope developed at ESO. So, because with such a telescope, I believe we will have both the resolution and the number of photons to, this, to do these kind of measurements. So perhaps you could tell us a bit more about the ELT? Oh, ELT. <laughs> this is the most ex good, exciting project right now in, at ESO, because this will be the largest telescope in the world and with a, it's a huge capability, not only in the field of extrasolar planet, evidently, but in cosmology, in every domain of astrophysics. Let's imagine the collecting area of 42 meters. So it's so huge. And uh, evidently, if we are discussing and dreaming for the field of extrasolar planet, you, you, are, you will have the possibility to do progress on, at least in two domains. One is a detection of very low mass planet because if you have more photons you can dream to have more precise measurements so detect smaller mass planet but also you you will have a better um, what resolution spatial resolution so you can have the possibility to to see a small planet close to the star so this is typically two the two domain where you, ESO is studying in new instrumentation to, to see what are the promise and the possibility uh, with this big telescope. So going back to the planetary system itself, how does the star compare to um, the sun in our own solar system? Oh, uh, the star where we have discovered this new interesting planet, it's a M3 star, so it's uh, about one third of the mass of the sun, and as a consequence, the luminosity of that planet is about one hundredth of the luminosity of the sun, so it's a very inefficient nuclear reactor. So, and this is part of the interest of this low mass object, low mass star, that we can have planets much closer and still in the habitable zone. And with the radial city technique, for us it's easier to detect planets uh, if the period is, is relatively short. So, for us it's very important targets, and uh, it's a very common kind of star. Most of the stars in the galaxy are low mass stars like this. And finally, we've just had the uh, launch of the Kepler spacecraft. Do you think it will be the ground-based telescopes or space-based telescopes such as Kepler 
that we'll find the first true Earth twins? I don't know, because you have two different ways. One is just to measure the velocity of very bright stars around us. And uh, to, to have a chance to detect a low mass planet. And right now you have several teams fighting to do this, to search for low mass planet by this technique. The other way is to, to use uh, Kepler spacecraft so you, you have a chance to detect an Earth-type planet with maybe one year of period. And then after you do not know, you know the size, but you do not know the mass. So after you have to do the radio velocity uh, of this star. And now we, are, we have a collaboration between Geneva Observatory and Harvard University to, de to develop a copy of ARPS for the Northern Hemisphere, because all the targets uh, by to, to, to be detected by Kepler will be in the northern hemisphere. So we need to develop a, a copy of the very successful ARPS instrument to be installed at La Palma Observatory. But nevertheless, it will be, I'm directly interested in these things, but nevertheless, I have to confess, it will be extremely difficult because most of the stars to be detected by Kepler will be relatively fine stars, let's say between 11 and 14 magnitude. So it's, it should be very difficult. It will be very difficult to, 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 detect, to, to measure the mass of this low mass planet. We will see. <laughs> okay, well, good luck with the planet hunting. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Merci.